Okay, this is just a video to show how to set up CentOS web panel on a CentOS machine. So first we're going to fire it up. Okay, so just logging. So this is basically a, a first install without anything. All I've done is just apply the updates and that's it. But the, um, I haven't set up the networking properly yet. So the first thing we have to do is to set up the networking so that we can give it a static IP address. Turn off DHCP. And then just give it a static address on, on your network. Sure it starts up on boot and definitely turn off network manager so it doesn't mess with your settings and just save that so the best thing is just give it a reboot to make sure the network comes up so that we don't get any surprises later on So now just type ifconfig, just to test that the networking's up, that's good. So now the next thing we do is to go over to the website for CentOS Web Panel, which is centos-webpanel.com. Let's see, click on the free download and we still have to scroll down. Click next on the system requirements and scroll again. And it'll tell you that you have to make sure to have a, a host name, which is important. So we just check that. And so if you just, so I've already given it one. So, so that's the, what the host name of the server is going to be. Basically, I just set that up during the install. And it's good to actually check your host file. Just to be sure that, uh, so, so that's a good thing is make sure that the, that name is in your host file as well, just so that the internal resolution, name resolution works. So we do that with nano. So it's server. Save that and just a quick test that it works. It's okay. Oh, that's good. So now we know at least the local services they'll be able to resolve the host name of the server so we continue uh, i've already installed it so we'll go to next and yeah so so these commands are pretty straightforward stuff and uh, so i've done this and rebooted and uh, finally we get to the actual install itself 
So we just basically follow the commands as it, as it says on the site. Basically, run the installer. And basically, now this installer will run through. It will take a little while to to complete. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just edit this part later on, but I'll leave it running just so that I don't have to stop the recording. Okay, so we're finally finished. And as it says, press enter to reboot. And even though it has the MySQL root password there, you don't really have to worry too much. Uh, because you can actually, it's in one of the files on the file system anyway. So at this stage, just press enter to reboot.
which is basically it for that. So now, we basically go into the website of things. So now you just put in that IP address that you set in the, um, when you're on the console. Basically, it's um, you have to add on port 2030 for the HTTP version. And so, to log in, it's just basically the same login that you put in when you installed CentOS in the first place. So there we have it. Now it has a few warnings at the top here. Um, we might as well set that. So basically, you can put that on whatever email address you want, but it'll be. Usually it's best to put one in that you're going to actually set up on this server. And then okay, so the main thing you need to to do is with the networking. And so the shared IP you have to change that to the address that you Assign because we're just working local at the moment. Obviously, if this server was on the internet, you'd actually give it. Well, it would have auto detected that address, or it should have. But for now, we're just going to use the local one. And then. Even though this part isn't necessary, but we just turn it on anyway. And also, make sure to read, even though we haven't set up any vhosts, it's best to just click it anyway. So that um, the shared IP, the IP address that you've assigned to this machine is used in Apache's configuration. And that's, that's the main thing that you need. So now, in order to set up the actual domains on here, you have to actually add users. So basically, um, you can see. So it's the easiest thing to do is to add just one user for each domain that we're going to use. So. So obviously you can see I've done it before, so just to save typing, I'll put them in and it's best to use just an E, well, actually I don't think it actually matters, but um, yeah, just, just just use the the email that um, in, in reality you should use an email address of the actual user you're setting up, but it's not really relevant for what I'm doing at the moment. So I'll just uh, yeah, cause this really should be their external email. So yeah, okay. Just so that they. 
if they can, so that they can be contacted by the the actual server itself to say if something's wrong with their account, etc. So that's the address you should really be putting in there. Um, so as you can see, it's given a password. And so in order for testing later, what you do is you need to make a note of that. Create that user, and so if you remember that domain, okay. So now that virtual host is created, and you can see the directory that's been created on the server for them. So, so let me just create another one. Make a note of their login details as well. Because we'll be using that later on when I show you how to actually set things up. Okay, so we create these two users. And so now, if we go into the user accounts and we list them, you can see we have the two users there now. And you can see um, the, the details about it. But the main thing is the IP address that they're going to use. Obviously, this only has one address. So this is just ba basically going to be set up as a shared host. And as you can see also, just when you look at the DNS, just checking that the actual domain itself is pointing to that um, IP address. So, so that, so now we have that in the DNS. Um, what we can do now is actually try and test that out. So the way that we can test to see if that is actually working is if you have another machine which is on the same network. And now at the moment, if you, so I've just got this virtual machine here. So. So if you basically type in the address, for that domain, it won't find it because obviously the, all the account, only the server itself knows about those domains. So what you have to do is make sure that the machine you're going to use to test any of the accounts on the server you have to make sure that it is using the dns of your your test server basically so what we can do is change that on whatever machine you're using so just go into the ipv4 and then so what this will do is it'll stop the internet from working on that machine but what you should be using is something like a virtual machine so obviously you're not going to care about whether the internet is actually working on it or not. But the important thing is that it can actually get to the individual domains which are actually on your test server. So that means you can set the server up first and make sure that the each individual account is working on it before you actually send it live on the internet. And that allows you obviously to do other kinds of testing like to see if this security, etc., is working well. So now if you try domain one again. Okay, so now we have, so that's good. So now we have forbidden, so that shows that at least we're connecting to it. Now this is one thing I've noticed about this. Um, uh, for some reason, when you first set up an account, it always seems to come up with, yeah, that forbidden. So what you then have to do is in each of the the users you basically go into the accounts 
and then you edit it, and, um, oh no, actually, I think, oh, that's wrong, got that slightly wrong. So basically, under user accounts, you have an option fix permissions, and what you do is, so you see where we had the errors, so that was on domain 2, so if you refresh, it still says forbidden. And what you do is so go to test2, who's the user for that domain, and then do fix account permissions. And so what that should, you should then find is that if you go back in here, there you go. So it works. So their account is now fixed. And any files they put in should actually be accessible. So we do that with domain1 as well, same problem. So, so you find the username for that domain that has the problem. And then do fix account permissions. And then when you go back to your test machine, refresh, there you go. So it's working now. Of course, one could say that. How do we know anything's actually working there? This could just be something the server always puts up. But what you then do is you can actually log in as these actual users. So now if we log out of the main panel, so what we can actually do is log in as the users themselves. So what we do is, and so that's why we make a note of what their passwords are, because you can actually, just like in something like, um, WHM for cPanel, you can actually give the users their own logins and they actually get a cut down version of it. And what you can actually do is you can go in and actually upload files. I mean, normally the sensible thing, of course, would be to use an FTP program. But, but this is like a quick way of just sort of, you know, getting things out of the way. And so you notice in that public, so basically public HTML is where the files are stored. And so that index HTML is the one which was shown when we just connected with our test machine. And so what you can actually do is upload a file. And so I prepared a file in advance just to show that this actually works and how the user themselves can actually go in and actually change their, um, the, the site once you've set it up. So if you refresh, there you go, see, so domain one. So that file that I up, just uploaded now shows up on the site. So now we can actually do the same thing for the other user. So same thing here, if you go to test, which is the domain for the other user. Same thing, we just get the test page. So what we can do is go into the HTML and then obviously prepare the file in advance for them that as well. So we upload it and then if you go back to their page, refresh, and there you go, it's the domain too. So there, there the users I've set up have actually been, the, we know they're working on the server, and because our test machine is using the, um, the DNS from the, um, yeah, because it's using the DNS from the actual test server itself, we can actually if we say we want it to add yet another user, so what we can do is just log out and go back in as root. So, so then if we then go in as the, so sorry, if we now add yet another user, just to show that it basically carries on even once our test machine, once our test machine is connected using this DNS, anything we add 
or so you could literally add like a hundred accounts in So yeah, so there's a limit on, uh, well, let's just use the number, it sh should work. Actually, we don't even need to log in here because I'll just make a note of it anyway. Um, so what will happen, so before we create it, we check and see it says domain three dot local domain. So if we put that in here, then just get not found. But then as soon as we create the user, it sets everything up. So it sets up the DNS and the Apache all in one go for you. And so then when you come back. And try again. There you go. So it says forbidden, obviously, because we haven't sorted the things out yet. So, okay, so I'm, I'm sure this is obviously a bug that they're probably going to fix eventually, but it's not too difficult, I think, just to like click a button to get it working. And once you click the button, there you have it. So there you see the very easy way of testing CentOS web panel on your local machine using um you know in in a virtual machine and you can have one virtual machine for your test and another virtual machine for the actual centos web panel and you can basically set up all your host you set up all the hosting get their um services sorry get their websites in put the user accounts in and test it all local and then once everything's sorted you can just basically send the image up i suppose you can send it up to amazon if you've if you're rich and have got enough cash to pay for it, or you can get your own VPS. And as long as the websites themselves aren't too heavy, then they can run, you can have your hosting set up on there and, you know, maybe look after a few websites with some small websites for people and all, all nice and sort of low cost. So thanks for watching and hopefully if you, and you can subscribe and if, you know, if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments. And I'll see if I can get some more videos up relating to setting up other things on this CentOS web panel as well. Okay, thanks.